Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Estancia Lapacho, and today we're going to get the last of the things set up, ready for our actual Let's Play, and then we're just going to have a little bit of exploration around the map. There's a few things that I'd like to sort of take a look at, um, see how far we can go at different points, and that sort of thing. I just, just want to have like a, a general little bit of a tour and see what we can find. So we need to get the sugar beet, uh, the sugar cane finish today we want to finish that being planted and then once that is done we can a bit laggy there uh yeah once that is done we can then fast forward time so that we've got a field of established sugar king now a few people have said they don't like the way i'm doing this very unrealistically and i'm cheating in money and so on and so forth all i'm doing is showing you what goes on behind the scenes this week uh, enough people wanted to see this process so that um, I felt that it would actually be worthwhile doing. And this is what I would have been doing. We're not moving, we're not starting the farm from scratch. We are not starting from zero. We've done that so many times, it is just going to be dull as ditch water to watch that again. So no, we're not doing that. We are going, we're moving to an established farm, one that has already been here for a while. We've got generations of farmers that have been here and they've been farming for a very long time. That's the, that's the kind of thing that we're looking at with this map. And um, you're not going to have loads of people who, you're not going to have people who've been farming here for generations and have absolutely nothing to show for it. They will have built up something. And that's what we've got here. That's what we're, that's what we're establishing. This is what I would do behind the scenes um, if I wasn't actually showing it to you this week. And yeah, like I said, there was quite a few people that said they'd quite like to see this whole process. So I decided, you know what? We'll do it. We'll do this for, for this series. I will do the setting up, so I've got this field all planted, and as soon as we've done this last little bit in here, we will then be able to fast forward time. That's going to be the next thing that we do, fast forward time, so that we've got this. Now, we do need to just make sure that we've got all the machines ready and lined up. There's a couple of bits that we still need to do. We want to get a combine established, although I did say that I get a John Deere combine. I don't actually have one ready for that yet. So that's one thing that I haven't done yet, is got a John Deere Combine mod installed so that we've got a John Deere Combine on here. I will get that done, ready for next week, so we've got the that one's here and ready to roll. Um, other than that, I think we are almost good to go. Um, that, let me just switch over quickly to this one here. Press H. Now, we've got the bigger planter over there, and I'm actually thinking that that's the one that we're going to use. That will be the planter for the farm. So this smaller one we're not going to use anymore, and the case tractor as well. I like the idea of having the older tractor, but I think we will actually sell them. So we'll sell both of those. I'll get rid of that case tractor right there. Sell. And I'm also going to get rid of the smaller planter, which is that one there. So if I sell that one... Excellent. And that leaves us with the two-row billet planter, and we've got the one case there. So make sure you tell me in the comment section again if you think we should try to run two of these at once. If you do, then yes, we will try it. We will see if we can do We'll see if we can do it. It could be quite interesting. We'll see if we can have this set up here for running one of them, and then we'll run the other one... Um, sort of on its own but we'll run alongside it with the tractor with those um, sugarcane trailers so that's kind of what we're going to be doing with that now we need to look at fields and I did say that I would get this group of fields around here so that's the ones that we will go for and then over here with the pigs we've got everything set up for the pigs um, and we didn't actually need to do anything to set them up we've just got pigs owned we've only got pigs there we're not going to do anything else with them but what we haven't done is we haven't got the cows ready yet so that's the that's one of the things that we want to do today so what i'm going to actually do in order to get that ready we're going to go to our lorry again our truck and we're going to take this one i'm going to unhitch that trailer there so we've got the two sugarcane trailers there ready and waiting and then if i go back through here we can get that one and we can reset it just like that that goes back to the shop and i'm gonna need now a trailer in order to carry some bales so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to be getting a load of bales for a few different things and we're going to go with the flegel transport runner ual to go on this one attaches we'll add a trailer hitch now i would like um 
I'm, I'm sort of leaning towards not having this one and in fact having the Joskin bail wagon again. I know we used that one in the last series, but I'm actually thinking that we could use that one again. So we'll run the Joskin bail wagon. That is auto load. I, I will be using auto load. I don't like having to manually stack everything, mainly because I've got an idea. And I think you might like the idea. Let me buy that one a minute. Now, you'll probably notice the colour. That is because if I... This is not in here. Actually, the Welga Baylor. I'm wanting to run this one. I've actually got to reset that one back to the standard because I changed it all for the Unrealistic series. So I'm going to set that one back to standard. Um, do you want me to run small bales for the, one of the first harvests? Should I do a load of small bales? Um, if, you know, if you think that I should. I mean, I know we've done small bales quite a bit. But would you like to see me do it on this map? Yes or no? So that one you can comment about again um, today as well. As well as the sugarcane harvester. Should we have a second one of those? Um, now, where is the bits and pieces that I'm actually looking for? I think they are actually all in tippers. I've put a few mods in, but I haven't put them all in. But I've got the toll pack here. This is actually from... This is uh, what comes with the uh, Broadacres thing. Um, with the broad acres uh, map there's the a whole pack that comes in with it and we've got the joskin one here as well uh, that's just been released and that actually looks really cool so we'll be playing around with that one sometime soon as well but yeah part of the toll pack they've actually taken the UAL um, and recolored it to toll so um, I decided not to set that one revert that one back to standard and I've kept this one as this nice turquoise color with the toll coloring on it I think it looks pretty cool so I'm going to take that one there, and it should be full auto load for everything. We've got square bales, round bales 1.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Then we've got the HD bales, which are the small ones. We've got pallets, big bales, which are the Heston bales. And we've got bigger pallets, which is pallets that comes from sawmill, stuff like that. And then back to standard square bales. So I'm going to do square bales for some of this. And I'm going to do round bales for some of this as well. So if I go over here, another thing that I've got is um, we've got the poplar saplings. We've got pallet saplings here. I don't think the pallet saplings do actually grow palm trees, which is bitterly disappointing because you can cut palm trees down with the tree harvester. So I don't know about that. It's something that we will test later on when we actually get going with the realistic series because we will be doing some tree cutting. We've got sugarcane pallets you can buy. I've got a load of bales here, so I'm going to buy... Um, a load of straw bales. I'm going to buy um, a few stacks of these. Actually, I'll get three stacks of straw and I'll get three stacks of hay bales as well. Uh, that's two, that's three. And then finally, we've got round silage bales. I'm going to get four stacks of round silage bales. There we go. Uh, four of those. And actually, you know what? I'm going to go for four ba four stacks of um, hay as well. And we're going to go square bales for hay. So square bales for hay and straw, round bales for silage at the moment. Later on, we'll do something different. Now, I've also got this mod here that adds pallets of soil and pallets of sand. Something we're going to look at in the normal Let's Play. I think this is really, really cool. You can put it down. And they've given the soil the same... You can throw it on a trailer. Um, you can put it... Basically, you put it down on the ground. And it has the same properties as um let me just set that one to loading a minute it has the same properties as um chaff so you know it's it's kind of spongy and it gives and rather than being like a solid wall as uh, similar to snow i think as well um and the great thing about that is right how many can i put on here i think i could actually put four stacks of straw on here yes i can i can do four stacks of straw if i wanted to so let me just grab the straw that we've got here and get that and i'll take four stacks of these as well so if i back this one up and then we can run these stacks of straw back up to the cows so let me get that there and i want to go pallets and then i want a fourth stack of straw bales yes there we go there's my fourth stack of straw load that on right so we've got oh no there's two bales left i remember now that's why i didn't want four that's why i didn't want four stacks um, okay, we can do something with that in a minute. And if I... Now, I can't remember if I can actually teleport properly with it loaded on like this. I think I can. So we'll move this here up to the yard. So that is there ready. And I'm now wondering what I should do for bedding. Uh, not for bedding, sorry. For uh, where we store the bales. I don't want to store the bales in there. I want that to be like the main machinery shed. So I'm wanting a 
an extra shed to go in here now we've got under placeables we do have like one of these the vehicle shelters we've got the large vehicle shelter i've added a couple of extra ones in today that we can take a look at i've also got fruit trees orange trees are going to be beautiful for this map it's going to be absolutely perfect so we will be looking at those later on this vehicle shelter here now what i'd like really is a large a tall structure that i could then use the um the bale stacker rather than having to use the auto load trailers i wanted to be able to use the artisan um, but i don't think we've got any sheds so that the artisan can um tip inside and it would be nice if we could have that it would be really really awesome if we could tip inside the sheds with the artisan however we don't necessarily need to we could use a different vehicle shed um and just use the auto load trailers um because you know then having the artisan wouldn't it wouldn't be a necessity you wouldn't have to have the artisan there so we could do this one and we could have this i mean this has got various different options on it i can put this one just about anywhere i want to this it, i i couldn't put the other shed very close over here yesterday but this one i can i can move this one all the way over here i'm going to put this one over here and we can use that one actually i'm going to put one about there i think can't go too close to that but yeah if i go there See, I want to rotate it round. I don't want it that way. I actually want it this way. I want it to face like that. Um, now, is that reasonably straight? Let me twist myself round so that I can sort of get it reasonably lined up, I think. And I reckon that we can have this one back here. So we've got plenty then. We've got more shelter for machinery if we should want it. But no, the main reason for having this one is to store bales. So do we want it here and then mow in round behind it? Or should I leave this one until next week and then like change the surface of this here? Right, so we're not putting it onto grass. You know, I think I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that now. That's another one I want comments on. Do you think I should put, do you think I should change the surface of the ground? We could use that ground modification mod because I think that one's sort of the issues that did have a sort of mostly been ironed out i mean maybe with 1.5 it's going to start throwing up more issues i'm not quite sure but we could try that i mean we can just stick a bale flat on the ground and throw some you know say that we're throwing um tarpaulins over them so you just put some sheets over the top of them and then you haven't got any issues and that would be quite realistic i know a lot of people put all of their stuff with tarps over and don't put anything else and um, that would make a lot of sense it would be a lot easier to do that than it would anything else so I'm going to bring these bales back over here. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to unload straight onto where the cows are. And then I can put the remaining straw, uh, the remaining straw over. We'll just sort of stack it up over there for now. And then we can see about buying a shelter later on. So that is everything on there as much as it's going to take by the look of it. I thought that I wasn't unloaded onto trailer, but maybe I am unloaded onto trailer. Um, if I load there and stop loading unload onto trailer but right, that would appear to be all the straw that i can put into that go and look at the cows nope not even close i reckon it's going to put most of this load in there to be fair so let's go uh load onto the trailer stop loading and then if i select the side that i want to unload which is there and then press y now we've unloaded as much as we can into the cows if we take a look now it's full Sixty-eight thousand liters of straw they are going to require a lot of straw they're going to require a vast amount of straw so let me load that back onto the trailer like that and just get those last bales there we go that is now loaded up stop loading and i'll bring this over we're just going to drop this into the field for now so that we've got some bales of straw that are here ready and we're going to do i was wondering about putting mixed feed in straight away but i'm not sure at the moment i didn't want to unload on the trailer then i just did it again this one is sometimes quite tricky to remember which way to do things as you go through so let me drop those there so we've got the bales there and now i can teleport back down to the shop so that we can get the next lot so the shop is here if i teleport onto the road near there we go that's fine and i get the next lot of bales I press x on there and i get a load of bales again we will teleport these back up and i'm gonna put hay straight in for the cows just as it is i'm not going to put the mixed feed in just yet but we can make mixed feed um i'm thinking that we will actually use the mixed feed um placeable which i don't think it's here 
Is it in animals? I don't think I... No, I didn't actually activate that one. I would like to use the um, the placeable, the same one that we used in um, Garala. I really, really like that placeable. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And it's going to be really, really useful as well. I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic for using with this map. So let me just unload there onto the trailer and then reload again so that they're a bit neater and tidier. We will put hay in for the cows as much as they can take. And then we will keep a load of silage here. We can make more hay near the beginning of the series if we so choose. Let me bring this round here. If I put those like that and then unload onto the trailer and then back up here, I think that will just come off the trailer straight into the feed area. No, it won't. Okay, so we have to do it exactly the same as we did the last one. I'll pull that over here. Just so that we've got just enough room on the side of the trailer to drop the bales down in. Uh, just bring that one up like that. And then I go um, load them back on. Put them onto the side like that. Drop them in. And there is all hay. So let me load those back up again. I think that is everything full. I think it is. I'll soon find out. So what I do... Just go and look. <laughs> oh! No! Um, that's not even close. That's not even attempting to get close to completely full. We are going to need a massive amount of hay and silage in order to feed these animals properly. And that could present a few problems. Right, we're not going to put water in yet. Actually, I think I've made a mistake here. I shouldn't have been putting anything in for them just yet. I should have been waiting until after we had fast-forwarded time. Um, so I'm, I might actually regret doing this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring those silage bales that we've got. I'll bring those back up. And I'm going to put those over here with these bales. So we've got... Uh, uh, we do have some bales here that I'm hoping will keep the cows going for a day or two. They are not going to keep the cows going for very long at all. They really are not. We don't have anywhere near enough here to keep the cows going for any length of time whatsoever. We put that over there and unload those there so we'll go and get that silage in a minute before we do that we, we've um, sort of done that for a bit and we're getting a bit bored with that so let's take this one here this can now go back down to the shed we've finished with our sugarcane planting and this one is now completely empty so when we want to come back and do more sugarcane planting we will have to reload this one from scratch with fertilizer and with sugarcane but we've got it all here it's ready to go so that one can go in shed in here and that one will be out of the way. Here's our Stara 150, that one is. I really like these tractors. They are really good. Um, right, what else have we got? I don't know if we're going to keep this one. Actually, I think we will, but there's another vehicle that I want to get as well. And, and then we've got the small ST Max here for running around the yard, as well as the small Massey as well. We've got some pallets of sugarcane here. Those are ready to go for planting over in that field over there. And then after we've used those, we'll use some of the sugarcane that we harvest to um, fill up the planters as well. So that will be okay. As for cows, I'm actually going to go in the XML file after we're done here. And I will put all of those up to maximum, as well as having a few bales here at the yard. So that is going to, it's basically going to give us all of the food that we need for the cows. Um, and they should be okay with that. Um, but the next thing that we want to do is actually going to be this. We're going to come over here. Now, we've got to be very careful about this. Because I want to have some fields bought and i want to have a couple of fields that are ready to harvest so at the moment we're going to i'm going to buy everything up through here and that field there is ready to harvest and that one is in corn now having some corn would be useful so i'm actually going to keep that field that one is ready to harvest i'm going to keep that one there so let me just go on a little bit fast and we'll run up here um jump over to you there we go and we're going to buy that field just as it is then we've got there's one over there that's ready to harvest that one is canola and we've got sunflowers in it i'm not actually that bothered about the rest of them we've got that one. i'll tell you what though that field there number field number three we'll go and buy field number three right now and this one here there we go 
So we've got field number three. That's going to be another one that we harvest at the start. And then we've got several fields that we're going to need to plow um, after we've harvested. So we've got that one there that we'll need a corn header. And then we've got some wheat there. And we've got more wheat down over there in field three. So we've got two fields of wheat that we'll want to harvest. That is going to provide us with some food for the pigs. Um, that we, so we'll be able to keep that back. Plus it's going to provide us with some straw as well. Now, other than that, we do want some grass. We've got a little bit of grass around the yard that we can give fresh grass to the cows with. And we've got this field down here that I've said that I would like to plow up fairly early on so that we can sort of turn that, turn that into planted grass. And I'll maybe do the same here and combine these fields into one, kind of like I did in the time lapse. Other than that, I don't think we need to worry too much about it. So now we've gotten to this point, what we do next is we use the creator tools and we fast forward time. We go quite quickly. What you need to do, you can't, you've got to be careful that you don't overdo this. If you, if you overdo it, you do actually um, cause a few little glitches. So we go to about 3,800 fast forward time and we go through our first night. We go all the way through and when we get to about 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, we will slow it right down again and we'll let everything catch up. There we go. We'll slow down and we'll let everything catch up. We go to one time speed and we'll let everything catch up. So that's the um, the sugar cane is now being, um, is now growing. And I'm deliberately growing that field of sugar cane without adding any fertilizer into it at all. If you look here, it's not got any fertilizer on. Oh, no, it does. It's got one round of fertilizer. I'm not going to add any more to it than that. We will just stick with one round of fertilizer. Now, I did eventually go to one, just one layer of fertilizer needed overall in Gerala. I'm thinking that we will start with three layers of fertilizer on this map, but we may not necessarily keep it at three layers. We may move to one layer later on um, just to make it a little bit easier for us for everything that we need to do. Right, I think everything is now caught up on the map. If you look here, everything does seem to have caught up. We've got some, we've got ours are at harvestable stage here. And then these here. So we've got three now that are actually harvested. They're finished. So I'm going to buy those because I want to. I want to be purchasing these at um, empty stage. I don't want to be doing anything to these fields to start with. I want to be able to just um, ignore them, and then we can sort of move out into them later on. And the idea is we will have several machines, and we'll be able to sort of put them going on the map um, with hired help. So we're sending out the hired help to go and do various different tasks as we concentrate on other things. And I want one more over here. I want that pig field there as well, the one right next to the pigs. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this field. I actually think that we might use this one and we'll do a few potatoes here. If we do potatoes there, we can um, just stack them up here somewhere. Or maybe we'll put a small storage shed or something um, and bring them so that we've got somewhere to keep the potatoes for the pigs. And that way we can get the pigs going to 100% feed later when we actually want to get to that point. Right now, though, we don't actually need to worry about that. The race over here. This is all a forestry area. I don't think you can go across this fence. No, that is the, the actual boundary is this fence along the north here. But you've got all this area here. A few big trees. Not a lot of big trees, but there are a few big trees here. And we could cut all of these down. I don't know if these trees here can be done with the tree harvester. I know the palm trees can, but I don't know if the ones over here can be done with the tree harvester or not. So that's something that we'll be able to test later on. Definitely the palm trees we can do with the tree harvester, which I absolutely love. So I think that that is fast forwarded enough. Um, I think everything's caught up. So we will now fast forward again. I go up to about 3,000. You can take this all the way up to like 15,000 times speed, but it does tend to cause some funny glitches with it if you do that. And you can already see things are starting to catch up. So I'm actually going to slow down now and just let it catch up to what it's doing because there were some changes being done on the map. We've had a second stage over here. Um, and it doesn't look like it's actually ripened all the way across the map properly there. And I really hope it doesn't stay like that. It looks like it's going to. It does do that sometimes, which is a little bit of a nuisance. There's nothing that we can do about it. We've got several fields now that got like half and half. However, it should catch up a little bit later on. So we're not going to worry about it right now. Um, if I walk over here, you'll probably... Actually, no, you can't actually see any difference with those fields. But I think that there's... Where was the one? Oh, no, they have now caught up. They're, they are catching up. So we can just... We'll stand right here in the middle and look at these. 
and we're still we don't have any others that have gone to harvested state yet and all of these here, I want them in Harvested State before I buy them, as well as Field 12. Actually, Field 12, we might get like that. Is my timer going off to say that we've run out of time? This is kind of the final stage that I do in order to make sure I've got everything ready for the map. And that is already going to Harvested Stage right there. So I'll just slow down and let everything catch up on the map again. And while it's doing that, I'm going to go over to Field 6. Actually, I just want to go and see what we've got for... Time scale is real time. Plant growth is on normal. Uh, what I said I was going to do. I think we want to leave that on normal, don't we? So we move back over to here. I want to go to field 6. Visit and we buy field 6. 370,000. So I'll buy that. I'm just going to add in a little bit of extra money so that we can buy anything else and the rest of the fields that we need. Um, when we come to start doing this, I'm going to have around about $250,000 think that would be about right i think to start the farming off and then we've got a little bit of money that we can buy a few things with we're not going to need to worry about buying extra land anytime soon not not at the beginning of the series uh, but we will then have money to be able to buy things later on should we need them or to expand different machines that we might want that sort of thing so i'm thinking that that would be about the way to go for it at the moment um obviously comment your suggestions very much i i do do all of this off camera i do all of this setting up and preparing the map and everything i do it all behind the scenes before i start a series so you you're getting an insight into how i operate things and how i do things so i can get it all ready for you um i know some people don't particularly like this idea of seeing me do all of this because it's kind of breaking the immersion for you a little bit and i apologize to those people that don't like it um, this is actually going to be the only time I do this on a realistic series. I just wanted to do it as a one-off, just to sort of give you some some insight into what we do. We buy that one as well. Right, so we've got all of those are uh, harvested. We've got field 12 there. Field 2 has not yet fully grown, so we can't do it yet. Um, field 4, I, what is that crop? That's barley. Actually, I think we'll buy that one. We'll buy that one as it is. So we've got a little bit more... Um, grain to harvest at the start so let me buy that one as it is so we've got all of these fields they're good to go except for field 12 we haven't bought yet what is that one in that's in potatoes no we're not gonna we're not gonna do potatoes yet because um we're not gonna be starting pigs until later on in the series so that's something that we'll wait for i think and so i can go and fast forward again let me run this right through now until tomorrow. Everything should now stay roughly the same. If, I know that there are some on the outside edges that will need updating, but we'll let it run through a whole day. And we go to about 8 o'clock in the morning. Keep going. And hopefully... Oh, now it's gone very dark. There we go. That's better. Run all the way down. Transport company for canola. Okay, We've, we don't have any half and half measures on the fields. Most of these, they'll stay as harvested for a little while. The sugar cane is now ready to harvest. That one up there is ready to harvest as well, so I'm not going to buy that one. I'm going to leave it at this stage, and we won't own that field. We will own this block here, but we won't own that one, so we can always buy that one later on if we want to. We've got an area here that we would be able to convert into a field. We've got an area here that we could be able to convert into a field and this area here as well so we've got a lot of areas that we can do we could also maybe do something up on the plateau up here which i think could be quite interesting and we've got everything else set and good to go so the final thing that we do is i just want to jump this one back down and grab those silage bales that i've got near the shop so i'm going to jump that one over there onto the road Start it up, and we'll grab those silage bales, and we'll run them back up. So we've got a full load of silage bales. We've got a couple of straw, and we've got some hay as well. Um, actually, you know what? We are actually running out of time, and there's one more thing I want to do. So I will move those up between now and next week. There's one other thing that I wanted to do, and that is I want to show you the last new item that we've got. We've got this convertible. We're going to go for this color here, actually. Oh, no, we're not. We're going to go with hot pink. A hot pink convertible. This is fantastic. And uh, we're going to make it a little bit more powerful. Uh, wheel setup. We can go designs. Oh, different designs. Um, the rim color. 
Ooh, what do we do with this? Actually, I'm going to go for that bright blue there and then a design color with the hot pink as well. No, we're just going to leave it like that. And buy. Yes. Okay, this thing is going to be awesome. You come out of there. Oh, 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 yes. Look at that car. Oh, this is fantastic. Here is our car. This is good. This is our. This is going to be our main runaround car, actually. This one. And yes, this co this color is fantastic. Look at this vehicle. This thing is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. What a wonderful car. So we're just gonna we're gonna drive this one back up to the yard and we're gonna stop there and then we just want there's just a couple more things I just wanted to have like a drive around on the map with a faster vehicle I don't know if I'm actually going to have time I think we've got a bit of time for doing this um, but this car this this is amazing I love this car we, we're gonna take I'm just gonna use this car as a screenshot for today I think and we will be using this as our runaround vehicle here at Estancia Lapacho. Uh, come racing up through here. So of course, what we want to do is we want to put this one in here, and actually, no, I'm going to put, I'm going to actually move this one round, and I'm going to put it in front of the house like this, there, and then I'm going to take that there as the the, the screenshot that I want. Is that not the most wonderful car you have ever seen? Oh, that is fantastic. I love that car. Right, that car is now our pride and joy. So we're going to park that one. Actually, it might rain. So we're going to have to park it in here. So let's just back in around the corner. There we go. We're not going to put that filthy pickup in here anymore. We're going to have this car here. This one, this one will go into our garage. That's where that one is going to live, right there. And then just for our very last look around the map, there is a different vehicle that I want to get. And I will sell this one when I'm done. When I'm done playing. So let me go. Uh, I'm going to go for a purple one on here. I'm going to go for dark red rims. And I'm going to go for that color. And go for twin GT stripes. Yes. Right. This thing is going to look awful. This thing is going to look absolutely awful. I want to go. There we go. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. That looks pretty cool. So this is our Lizard Road Rage, and we're just going to take this one to have a little bit of a tour around the map. And over we go, so you can see a good view of the plateau here as we fly over the top. And I think that this area up here, it would be quite interesting coming up here with tree harvesters and turning some of this into field that we could actually harvest and we could mow and so on and so forth. Um, it's not very easy to get up here. Um, most of it has got this kind of lip around here. Don't tip upside down. There we go. Um, most of it has got this lip up here. Let me get back up onto the top a minute. I love this thing. I genuinely love this car. Um, and you can access it very easily from this side. So the side nearest the farm. Is that going to finish upside down? How disappointing. How very, very disappointing. Um... But what you can do, there is a track round the back, actually, that you can access it from. So I need to reset that one a second. And we will go to the track round the back. The only problem with this car, I've souped it up a little bit, and it's too powerful. It just it goes too fast and ends up um, just crashing like that. Right. Uh, so yeah, we got this track here at the front of the farm that we can go to. But if we want to, if we wanted to turn some of the plateau at the top into um, an area that we could just harvest for grass, I'm not. I'm thinking that combines and crops and stuff would be too much to go up there. But I think that it wouldn't be too much to expect to have um, smaller vehicles. Uh, well, not smaller vehicles to to do anything to do with grass harvesting. So there's a road here that comes up, and if I just show the map. If you look, you can see it sort of... Actually, I'll, I'll do it on this one. Um, we've got our farm here. We come out. You've got the grain elevator and the animal dealership. And then you've got the sugar mill down here. And then it's it's not actually that far. You come out of the main entrance and you go onto the road. You just drive around here. And then you've got this track that comes in. It goes beside this sawmill area over here. And so you can harvest the trees up on the plateau, bring them down. And then you could load them from there here onto the train. So there's an option there to, to harvest the wood and use the train at the same time. So you're using both of them together. And then the area that you clear up here, we could very easily 
um, turn this all into ploughed land. Now you've got some small trees here as well. I'll just zoom up a little bit so we can sort of see it. One thing it's very difficult when you're at normal height, you can't see anything. As, you, as you're walking around, it's really difficult to see anything at all because of all the shrubs and everything. Come here through, come through with the plough and you'll be able to clear it all. So we've got some very small ones there which you'd want to clear with the stumps and so on. But if you're looking at the ground, you look at the ground textures, I'm hoping that that would actually be able to plough and turn into regular soil so that we could plant grass on there. It's something that we will find out in the Let's Play. I'm not going to do that now. I'm not going to run a plough up here or anything or teleport one up and test it because it's something I'd like to find out during the Let's Play. Um, and also, the whole you know that soil mod that I was saying about that we've got the pallets of soil? Maybe we could try piling a few of them up here. If we were to buy like a load of soil, a load of the pallets, and stick them right in here, in this little alcove right here, um, we could turn that into a track that actually goes up onto that plateau, and that could be our access point to get from the farm up onto there without having to go all the way around. Um, certainly for like a tract with a mower and stuff like that, um, maybe not for anything bigger, but we could do it like that. So that's kind of my ideas that I've got for the plateau up there. I think that could be a really interesting part of the Let's Play. Uh, allow us a chance to do the sort of things that we haven't done so far in any of the Let's Plays. So let me come on through here and I want to go up to the top of where the train goes. I'm not actually going to drive the train around today. I'm going to try and get this thing up there. Um... Right, let's turn around a minute, and we want to head up this way. There is a train station up here. It's the uh, the only cell point for the train, actually. So we'll go whizzing across here and see how far we can get before we um, crash. Okay, we're just going to bounce between trees. So it's over here. So this is the bit that I want to get to. The edge of the track, and the track does actually go up a hill. And you don't often get trains going up and down hills. They normally try to keep fairly level because it's a lot more work for a train to climb a hill. Um, so let me go up through here and see if it's possible for me to get up here without crashing. Apparently not. Okay, I'm going to have to do this very, very carefully because this car is extremely powerful and it's not going to like doing this if I go too fast. So we'll, we'll go at a reasonable rate and climb up through here. Just, I want to see this, just go to this piece up the top here. This is the cell point for the trains and it doesn't look like there's a great deal up here but i would imagine that what this is is the storage area and then it gets taken from here it goes further inland um and you just don't actually see that bit up here so um that's where the train cell point is it comes right up the top of this hill and goes to this little village here and i really love the feel of the way that they've done things on this map you've got kind of the, the really beautiful areas um, that you see so often in places in South America. And at the same time, you've also got the contrast of the um, the rundown areas as well, the places that um, really there's not a lot of money available. And it's it's very much, so many um, areas in South America are very much like that. It's, it's, such a, it's a place of such wonderful contrast. Um, and you really do find those contrasts quite sharply side by side. And it's the last thing I want. I just wanted to drive down this track here because I haven't actually seen this yet. It's really nice actually here. And you've got this absolutely stunning, beautiful countryside all the way around you. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's, it's quite a breathtaking place really. It's, uh, uh, all these um, huge areas in South America is just stunning it's just absolutely amazing there's so much to see and we go here nope actually i need to do that and that and then go here and i'm going to teleport right into the middle of the town stuck in the fountain right let me climb out of there get out of the car see what i mean you've got this absolutely gorgeous town here with this beautiful um a it's just stunning. It's just stunning that the whole town square here is absolutely beautiful, so well laid out. And then you've got the um, the fronts here. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And then you just go back a street, and you've got such a sharp contrast back here. You can really see the you've got wealth and you've got poverty lined up side by side. And it's sort of it's such a sharp. Um, harsh contrast it really is and it shows life is not fair
basically. And it really does show that. I, that's one thing I think uh, that South America shows up um, a lot. Well, not all of South. I'm not, so I'm not saying the entire continent, but I'm saying so many places in South America. You've got this right here. You've got this. And right next door, you've got... Um, it, it just well actually this isn't too bad up here through here but there are there's places where it literally just shows up the absolute stark contrast between poverty and wealth and they are literally side by side rubbing shoulders and it's something that I find absolutely fascinating it's it's incredible that you've got this like right side by side like this um, it tends to be in well certainly in the UK you don't have this sharp contrast like this there are well obviously there's wealth areas and there's very poor areas but they don't tend to be right next to each other they tend to be quite distinctly separated and that tends to be the culture for a lot of europe is um wealth and poverty are not associated with each other they're completely separated out and you don't get that quite as i mean obviously you do get that but you don't seem to get it as much in um, a lot of places in South America that I've seen. And it, to me, it's quite fascinating the way that that happens. And people don't seem to be quite so hung up on wealth. You've got some people that live like kings and you've got some people that don't. But generally, I get the feeling that, um, I mean, I've not actually been to South America. I can only go on countries that I've been to myself where something similar does happen. And generally, I've always had the feeling in those kinds of countries that wealth doesn't really matter. People don't actually care how much money you've got. Um, yes, it can be difficult for some people to put food on the table. And yes, it's, you know, some people have got more money than sense. Um, but generally, everybody just rubs shoulders with everybody and nobody seems to be too concerned about it whereas in the uk you very very much find a wealth divide there's, there's this very strong wealth divide where the wealthy will not mix with the people that don't have money and vice versa there's a lot of a lot of snobbery and there's a lot of inverse snobbery and it's it's something that is i don't notice quite so strongly in in other countries uh, no, i do to be honest, I do notice this more in tropical countries than I do in non-tropical countries the, um, where you have wealth and poverty just living, you know, rubbing shoulders side by side and neither side seems to actually care that the others have got money or they don't have money. Um, whereas in, certainly in the UK, you notice it a lot more. And it's, it's such a stark, con to me, it's a very, very stark contrast of uh, the two extremely different cultures are two different different ways that the world thinks and i find that utterly fascinating anyway i've, I've gone on I've, I've dragged on about that far too long um so we've got our estate all set up we've got the pigs ready to bring in later on we're not going to add any food or anything to those so they will literally just stay there at 250 pigs the cows i did make the mistake of putting some stuff in for them before we started fast forwarding so they are cleanliness currently is zero and they've got only a bit of straw so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to fill all of those up um i'm going to put roughly actually i'm going to put exact i'm going to put 150,000 i'm just going to make the numbers 150,000 on each of these so some of them will be over uh, populated to start with but i think generally it will come out all right and um we can sort of move into it and it should also give us a little bit of a buffer to get started because we do want to do sugarcane first now this field is enormous this field we may have been a little bit over ambitious with this so i'm thinking that we will definitely go for two sugarcane harvesters we'll start one on this side and we'll start one down on that side and we will try to run both of them together we will make a stockpile of sugarcane right here down on this field i think to start with and for now i think we will go without running an extra um building on here we will move we'll put these bales they can just sort of be stacked up out here somewhere maybe even we'll stack bales over in the middle here but i think actually that's going to be a bit too close might be better if we stack them here but we'll say that the bales are sheeted down and that can be okay and then we can use this area here to start with as grass for feeding the cows as and when they need it so this is everything set up we've had a brief tour of the map there is one thing i need to do before we go i need to sell that lizard road rage we don't want that one anymore that one can go right I've sold all the machinery that I want to sell. Now, 
we've got this small Bison Super FMZ Combine, and we're going to be using that one to do our first harvest in the small field. But as for the other ones, we won't be using that Combine. We're going to get another one. And I did originally say that, actually, I'd like to get a load all in here. I don't want a front loader and tractor. I'd like to get a load all of some sort. Um, actually, isn't there one in here? Um, zoom down a little bit. I thought there was one. No, there isn't. We're going to get, I think, a Manitou load all. I did use that one in the um, time lapse, and I quite like the idea of having Manitou. We'll either have that one or we'll get the Map Bro. Um, get the, the, what's it called? The, the Map Bro load, load all. Telehandler. Telehandler is the word I was looking for. Yeah, the mod. Um, so we could get that one over here and we use that one to run it as well. So to in next week's first episode, we will be starting in the um ranch we will start in our house and we will be going for oh by the way this one here is actually a radio mast that you would use on a lot of farms um a couple of people have actually filled me in on that one so thank you very much um yes that would make a lot of sense uh by the way walking through sugarcane when you're at normal height and we go to normal speed yeah if you haven't got a map you if you spin round a few times like this and then you haven't got a map you can't jump to see where you are. You've got no clue. So you literally, you get completely and utterly lost in the cane fields. Um, so if you've got a big cane field, don't go into it. You're going to get absolutely... I see, I've got no idea where I am now. Let me just bring that one up. Oh, I'm actually right near the edge. Keep going. There we go. See? Those cane fields are brilliant. It's absolutely awesome. But yeah, we will be looking at doing the cane fields. That's going to be our very first job. Um, the combine, I want to get a John Deere combine. I will see if I can get one ready. Someone has already given me a... I've had quite a few mods suggested. There's one combine there that I think looks pretty good that we could use to start off with. Um, we might... I think this farm is big enough for two combines. So we may run two combines on here. No, I don't, actually, I don't think we will. I think we will we'll, we'll get going with the sugar beet, but then we may end up just sort of harvesting these four fields to start with. Um, and then once we've done those, we've got a load of planting that we want to do up there. This field down here, we're going to plant with sugar cane. So that's going to become our sugar cane field after we've harvested this one. And then we're not going to do that one with sugar cane anymore because anymore, I think it's just going to take too long. So there we go. We are set up almost ready to go. I've got a few more bits to do to edit off screen and then we'll be ready to actually start our proper let's play right here in Estancia La Pacho. And that is that's an impressive pile of grass. Um, yeah, so we'll leave that as well. So if you enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.